My name is Bola. I serve as a deacon on the leadership team. Um, my wife, Remy, is here. She was a bit uh, exhausted this morning, but she pulled herself out to come and support me. So thank you very much. We have two daughters, Fermi and Tony. Some of you might know them, some of you might not. Um, they are quite quiet. Now, as you are aware, we're in a series of the, on the, of the Sermon on the Mount. And Brian started us off four weeks ago. He brought a message of us being the salt of the earth. Christian then brought a, new, a message on anger management, which was quite challenging. Managed to top that, he brought a message on overcoming temptation. And uh, Sharon did something amazing last week. She brought a message on loving our enemies. Now I'm glad that I didn't have to bring any of those messages, but they did it so well. So today, we're going to touch on a subject of giving to those in need. I'd like to touch on three areas through the message. Why we give. How do we give. And the benefits of giving. But just before I actually read the message, uh, the, the sermon passage this morning, which comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, let me touch on a personal experience that deepened my understanding of why we need to give. Back in 2021, my dad passed away back home in Nigeria. Um, my brother and I are UK-based, and uh, there were certain things that needed to be done before the, f the day of the funeral. And um, as we weren't going, uh, we, could, we didn't have the liberty to actually go for a, a lengthy period of time. We had to reach out to our relatives in Nigeria to actually start the preparation. Now, the, they realized that in order to actually get things going, they needed to set up a burial committee, which was chaired by one of my uncles. They reached out to my other uncles, aunties, cousins for contributions. These, vol these contributions were totally voluntary, and they were given on the understanding that they might not necessarily get it back. But they gave generously, and they were able to actually set things in motion and before our arrival. Fast forward, the funeral took place. But after the funeral, I actually then went to my uncle and I said, what was the purpose of all of that? Seeking contributions. He said the whole purpose is to clothe the family of the bereaved. So people do not see their nakedness. He said, because when this happened, it happens suddenly. And it is a huge expense. And sometimes the family are not able to actually bear the expense. So we come together as a family to actually support them. It then occurred to me that this is exactly what we should be doing as Christians. Looking out for one another. Bearing our burden. Because this, this is the very heart of giving. Now, let's look at the passage this morning. It would come up on the screen. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. If you do, you would have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, 
Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father in heaven sees what is done in secret and will reward you. As emphasized by Jesus, this passage is particularly speaking into giving to those in need. This might be poor, to the poor, and others in serious need of one kind or another. We know this to be true because in the message that we've just, in the passage that we've just read, verse two says, "Give to the needy." This is not to say that what Jesus is saying does not apply to other forms of giving. However, we need to know that the primary message of this passage, which is to give help, whether financially or through self-sacrifice, to those in hardship, be it through charitable giving or directly to those within your midst. Now, in preparing for this message, I looked up the psychology of giving, and here's what I found. Feelings of empathy, compassion, and other emotions can motivate us to give to others. As for the definition of giving, a gift may refer to the transfer of something without an expectation of receiving anything in return. Acts of generosity is a habit of giving freely without expecting anything in return. So let's consider my first point. Why do we give? As you walk through the portico this morning, I don't know how many of you might have noticed the words on the floor from John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him will not perish, but have eternal life. This is sacrificial giving by God. And I don't believe that there's anything humanly that we can do to top what God has done. He died on the cross and gave us salvation. And if we fall back in sin, we've got access back to him through the blood of Jesus that has been shed. And so from God's act upon the cross, we encounter a God who gives to us. Not because we deserve it. Not because we've earned it. But he's given to us as an act of grace. And not only this, God gives us our daily provision. We read that in a, the Lord's Prayer every week as we gather. Give us this day our daily bread. God is indeed is one who meets our needs. James 1 verse 17 puts it this way. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. What we can learn from all of this is that God gives not only to meet our immediate needs, but to meet our eternal needs. We are utterly reliant on a God who gives. The house we live in, the food we eat, the jobs we have, the cars we drive, the clothes we wear are all from God. This being the case, we are to give to others because God gave to us. Giving is a highly Christian duty and one we are all called to as this is an expression of our gratitude to God 
for all he's done for us. As every good and pleasing gift has come from our Lord, we are meant to acknowledge this by giving to those in need. Because guess what? God blesses us so we can be a blessing. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 to 14, expands on this point. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food would also supply and increase your store of seed and would enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, God would pray, uh, others would praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing them with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. The point of this passage is clear. God is given abundantly to us. We are called to give generously to others. Jesus challenges us to this way of life. We see this in the feeding of the 5,000, where Jesus challenges his disciples. This is what it says in Matthew 14, verses 15 to 16. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. He forces the disciples to actually look within. And when they look, they find five loaves and two fishes. They bring them to Jesus. He blesses them and feeds the 5,000. Whilst this was a miracle, he challenged the disciples to meet the needs of the crowd. They wanted to take the easy routes by dismissing the crowd. But Jesus wanted them to recognize the need to have compassion and giving sacrificially. It's no wonder Jesus says in the passage we read this morning in verse 2, so when you give to the needy, Notice the word when. Giving to those in need is not an option. It's a requirement of being a Christian. So why do we give? Because God gives to us. Let us now turn to my second point. How do we give? Notice verse 1 of the passage this morning. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. Here Jesus is bringing a message, a warning on how to give. (laughs) To give in secret as opposed to making an outward display to be seen by others. God is 
as much concerned with what we give as, as how we give. In other words, God is concerned about the motive behind our giving. Jesus says in verse 2 of Matthew chapter 6, so when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues, on the streets, to be honored by men, I tell you in truth, they have received their reward. Here Jesus is particularly speaking to the religious elites who often give publicly to be recognized and acknowledged. Jesus is saying that we should never do our giving in order to be seen and subsequently to be praised by others. In other words, we should not give because we might, of what we might get from it. Others thinking more highly of us, paying us compliments, or to receive special treatment for our giving. Jesus is saying that if your motive for giving is to draw attention to oneself, then you are trading your eternal word for a temporal one. In all this, please understand, the passage is not saying that we cannot show acts of kindness publicly. Rather, it's about checking our heart motivation when we give. Are we giving from a good place? Are we giving out of compulsion? or to be recognized. Let me share an example of how not to give. This came up in conversation with Manoj, and he's happy for me to share it. Many years ago, before he became a Christian, he was running his own business, and he was invited to a fundraising event. He had no desire to actually give to the charity. He just went on. But he got caught up, in a, caught up in the bidding process and ended up making the largest auction bid for an item put up for sale. The sole reason for him doing that was to gain recognition. As he had no recollection of what they were raising funds for when we spoke afterwards. <laughs> I would imagine that Maria would have had a good talking to him afterwards <laughs> when she got to find out. <laughs> and by the way, she's nodding her head, she probably did. <laughs> we have to give with the right intentions. As Matthew chapter 6, verse 3 and 4 says, But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Interestingly enough, the left and the right hand are all part of the same body. But Jesus is saying, don't let the left know what the right is doing. Before I... Before I actually expand on that, let me just share something which um, I didn't uh, share earlier on, and it's um, one of the reasons why we actually need to look out for one another. It's a personal experience. I have a, an elderly neighbor who lives about six doors away from me. And for the past four or five years, Every year he comes around, he grows uh, tomatoes and he brings the seedlings for me. He gives me the seedlings and I grow it in the garden. Um, and they, they yield nice fruits um, that I enjoy. Last week I was away. He came around and knocked on my door. And uh, my daughter opened the door and said, hey, we're away. He said, I've got those seedlings again. Um, tell your dad to come over whenever he's ready. She passed the message on to 
me when I came back. And yesterday, I actually went to visit him and got the yearly tomato seedlings that he gave me. We got talking. And as we were talking, um, uh, I was actually, uh, he said, oh, yeah, my doctors told me not to go out, you know, because I'm partially blind, can barely see. And he said, uh, and uh, my wife's gone. So I asked him, I said, where's your wife gone? He said she passed away 24th of August last year. Nine months on, I didn't know. And Remy was actually asking me about two or three weeks ago that she hasn't seen his wife. Now that brought some sadness to me that if I had actually been looking out, I should have known. Someone passed away nine months and I didn't know. That's the reason why we need to look out for one another. Be caring as Christians. Back to my points on our giving being secret. On the last Saturday of every month, we, or the second to the last Saturday of every month, we do the food bag collection. We don't know where the food ends up, but we know it blesses someone in need. Furthermore, the receiver doesn't know where it came from because they get it from a medium, the food bank, who does not disclose the giver. But the motives behind the giving is to bless someone in need. That's why, that, that is the giving that brings reward from God's perspective. This brings me to my third point, the benefits of giving. You may have noticed that Jesus uses the word reward three times in today's sermon's passage. The first instance is a negative implication. The last is a, pop, uh, is, is a positive. Let me elaborate. Verse 1, Matthew chapter 6. You will have no reward from your Father in heaven. Verse 2, I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. Because they've made a song and dance about it. Verse 4, then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. As illustrated, there is a good reward for those who give with the right intentions and in secrets. But those who give for personal gain, they have already chosen their reward. Jesus is warning his audience not to expect a heavenly reward because you've got it right there. If the motive behind our giving is simply to be seen by others, there's no reward from God. In Michael Green's book, The Message of Matthew, he says, it goes without saying that disciples will be generous givers. But they will not make their donations in a way that will draw attention to themselves. It should not be done publicly or to gain respect. It should be quiet. It will meet a need. Offered in love and gratitude to the Heavenly Father who has given us all we have. Let us consider in more depth the benefits of giving with the right heart and motive. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 43 would be helpful. This passage talks about what would happen when we come before God in judgment, where he'll gather the nations together and split them into two. 
one side on the left, that's the negative side, one side on the right. When I read the passage, I guess everyone would want to be on the right side. So let's pick it up from verse 34. Is it up there, Margaret? Then the king would say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom God, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me in. I needed clothes, you clothed me. I was sick, you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous would answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did, you see, when did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whenever you did it to one of the least, to these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. <laughs> He's dealt with those on the right. Now he looks to those on the left. Then he will say to those on the left, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. The point of this passage is that when we do anything to lovingly support another human being, it is as we're doing it unto God. This is because Jesus identifies with those in hardship and going through suffering. This also helps us understand why Jesus speaks of judgment for those who don't look after those in need. You see, God is less concerned about our career accomplishments and more about whether we lived for the sake of others. The point of today's sermon passage is don't live for yourself. Instead, live for God. And one way to do that is by caring for those in need. For those who do, there will be a great reward. <laughs> Recently, Remy and I were talking about her late father. A great man of God he was. He was very relatable. He related upwards, downwards. And with his colleagues as well. During times of harvest, back when we call it harvest, it's the same as the tanks offering. He would call his nephews and nieces, asking them to rally up contributions to support the church during this period. Now, some of them weren't warm to this idea because they were young and had their own challenges. But what he was trying to instill on them is a responsibility to actually give to God. Now years on, I see these same people have picked up the same mantle that their uncle had passed on to them. And they give generously to, uh, they give generously to churches, to families, to friends. They've become huge support pillars within the society. And so in closing, I implore you to seek 
ways in which you can lend a hand to those in need. Wherever we turn, there are people that need help. Charity serving vulnerable in the society. Neighbors who need a listening ear. I share the story of my neighbor. I know what I need to do to put that right. People in the church who need your prayerful support, our hearts should be postured to generously help people whenever we can. And this is what it means to live out our faith. This way, we too may be expected to hear Jesus speak these words over us. Then the king would say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take up your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Amen.